What is going on, Eye Warriors? It's your boy, Edward V. And in this video, we're going to talk about how you can make intermittent fasting easy to do. I've noticed that there are a lot of people who want to enter the intermittent fasting arena or have fallen off and find it incredibly difficult to get back into it. So in this video, I'm going to tell you some tips and tricks that you can do to basically get yourself back into that flow, into that rhythm, so you can go ahead and complete your intermittent fasting journey. I'm gonna go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. All right, guys, not going to bog you down with my jump rope, but it's only $16.50. You can click on the top right hand corner of this video or down in the description box below. It's a good quality rope with an aluminum handle, a swivel design, speed rope for only $16.50. You can't go wrong. And at the same time, you're supporting this channel. And of course, as always, guys, thank you for your support. Now let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, so this is one of those things that is very prominent in the intermittent fasting community. The either the on and off and the difficulty of jumping back on or just the fear of getting into intermittent fasting to begin with because of the fact that it's just too much or or too it just seems too far-fetched for you to do because you're so used to eating or you've gotten so far away from doing intermittent fasting that your flow is so hard to break you just notice that you're constantly hungry uh and and you can't complete your scheduled fasts this happens a lot for one especially if you've been doing intermittent fasting and you get off of intermittent fasting your body wants you to not do that again because it's so used to the eating pattern that you built over the course of your entire life. You have to understand that you're competing with a biological rhythm and a biological habit that you've built over years in just a few months. So if you go back to it, your body's going to keep releasing ghrelin, which is a hunger hormone, during the times where you would normally be fasting to try to make sure that you get off of that. However, you can get into that flow, and once you do, it's all she wrote in terms of the flow, unless you break it again with consecutive eating times outside of your eating window. But if you don't do that, it becomes a very easy thing to do. If you didn't know, there are many science-based and study-based benefits to intermittent fasting. My entire channel channel is riddled with many, many studies, over 400 videos on intermittent fasting, and many of them either are derived from or tackle directly what the studies provide on intermittent fasting. There are many health benefits that come with it, but the most focused benefit that comes from intermittent fasting is the reduction in adipose tissue and where it targets body fat more aggressively than just normal calorie restriction. You still need calorie restriction, but with intermittent fasting, you target body fat directly because of that ketosis process that happens when you go into a fasted state. So now that you know why it's important and why it's such a good tool to use, how to get into it or back into it? Well, I would say that you need to have supplementary tools to keep you from actually breaking your fast. And what do I mean by that? Non-caloric things that you can consume so that you can simmer your body down just a little bit as you try to fight through that feeling of wanting to eat or appetite. Because remember, you're not truly hungry. I mean, you, your body is made to go many, many days without food. Not that you have to do that, but just even the fact that you stored body fat basically creates its own internal energy bank that your body can utilize for energy. And there are many reasons for eating the macronutrients, for example, but of course, the main reason is for the energy source, the calories that you're the calories that you need. So just trying to not do anything at all uh, makes it much more difficult. I would definitely recommend having a crutch at first that you can wane off if you want to, but you need that crutch for at least the first two weeks until you're in that flow. What can that crutch be? Any non-caloric thing that you can consume that's consumable, obviously. For example, water or tea, even though tea might have some calories, is incredibly low and would not take you out of your fasting regimen. Also, black coffee is another tool that many people like to use. 
that is also low in calories and will not take you out of your fasted state. However, one of the best tools to use based on the studies that we have is carbonated water. And believe it or not, there are no studies showing that there are any ill effects that come from carbonated water, even though you may feel because it feels so aggressive. There's actually no studies to prove that any ill effects come from carbonated water, but they did test water versus carbonated water. And all carbonated water is, is small air pockets in water. So there's nothing special there, but they tested it and they realized that when you drink water versus when you drink carbonated water, there's something that your body does in your mouth where it thinks that you're about to consume something that does have energy or is substantial enough it sends electrical signals to your stomach but it does this in anticipation of you consuming something that you, that will provide energy that will have calories but your body is a little bit jumpy your body does certain things in preparation for something even if it's wrong just because it wants to be quick and make sure it's prepared once the food or the whatever you consume gets into the belly because it's gonna get there quick but it instantly knows that water does not have or carry any energy the thing that does however slightly trick your body to think that calories may be coming in is carbonated water because the electrical signals that are preparing your stomach for that consumed item does go off with carbonated water so you still get the best of both worlds in terms of just being water and nothing extra no frills and unlimited amount but also that little sleight of hand towards your body where your body thinks that you're about to eat something this suppresses a lot of feelings of appetite if you consume it during the times when you may be feeling a little bit hungry that's why i consider carbonated water probably the best subsidiary tool for intermittent fasting during your fasting window even better than water although water is more accessible and it's the second best if you have access to carbonated water you're probably going to be better off in terms of not feeling hungry and still getting the effects that you will get from drinking water and the cool thing is there are flavored carbonated water but not the ones that are artificially flavored the ones that have like a slight hint of a flavor because they're naturally essence which also carries no calories all that naturally essence means is that they burned a bunch of fruits below the water and had the smoke and the fumes of that fruit go up into the water and and give it that slight flavor of whatever fruit they were burning below the water before they carbonated it and put it into the can. That's all that is. That's what naturally essence is. No calories, nothing artificial, comes directly from fruits, but it's just the fumes and the flavor, which can give you some variety when trying to consume something during your fasting window. And one more thing that I would definitely recommend you do so that you can combat the feeling of wanting to eat you have to understand that this is also a psychological battle that you're having with yourself. If you can convince yourself that you need to eat right now, or you want to eat and you just really don't care, you just, you want food, then you will probably go get that food, especially if you're not in that flow. If you haven't gotten those two weeks under your belt or three weeks, whatever it takes for you to get adapted to the, the system, until you get that under your belt, you're going to probably break your fast prematurely. One thing you need to ensure is that you are 100% satisfied with the final meal that you eat or the meals that you've eaten during your eating window. If you are not satisfied with the food that you've eaten during your eating window, you will find an excuse to go back and eat something. So don't just go willy-nilly eating little snacks here and there and call it a day. Make sure you get a full-fledged meal for that, so that you can eat it and then feel good about what you ate. Make sure you're satisfied after you eat it and that it even mentally feels like a satisfactory meal, that you get your chicken and your carbohydrates or whatever it is that you wanna pack in there, but just make sure that it is a meal that you feel is more than satisfactory. Because if you do that, you can then have at least a psychological edge when you're sitting down just watching TV and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I wanna eat, I wanna eat something, you won't have you won't have the excuse of, 
well, I didn't really eat anything good or I didn't really eat much because those are the Achilles heel to holding on to your fasting window. Those are just two things that I'm going to go ahead and put in this video, but I can make this a series if you guys want. I can keep on adding more things to make it easier for you uh, to implement this intermittent fasting regimen to stick to it. And if even if you're falling, even if you feel like you're falling off a little bit, throw these uh, kind of tools in there to help you stay the course. Hopefully this video has helped you guys and of course as always i want to thank my patrons from my patreon i'm gonna go ahead and put their names right up here